welcome to the Reality Revolution. I'm your host, Brian Scott. Returning to Vernon Howard, we had a lot of fun in the previous episode reading Vernon Howard on how to feel great every minute. He was a very good spiritual teacher. A lot of it came from some deep place. And a lot of people have confessed to being highly influenced by his teachings and helping them to awaken to a greater understanding of how to deal with catalysts in their own feelings. Today, we're reading from his book, Success Through the Magic of Personal Power. And we're going to read the first two paragraphs. It's really talking about your right to dynamic power and the power of decisions. Howard begins by quoting Aldous Huxley saying, every man who knows how to read has it in his power to magnify himself, to multiply the ways in which he exists, to make his life full, significant, and interesting. And Ralph Waldo Emerson, life is a search after power. And this is an element with which the world is so saturated that no honest seeker goes unrewarded. The two absolutely necessary elements for your success of any kind are one desire and two power. As for desire, we all possess it in healthy abundance. You and I want to advance ourselves in whatever areas we fancy and in the shortest time possible. We all wish for more prosperity and prestige in our business and professions. As perfectly normal individuals, we want greater achievement and satisfaction in affairs of love and sex. Every person hopes to command respect and popularity from these around him. Most importantly, we ask for a future rich in comfort and security. All of these plus much more can be won by you if you thoroughly understand the other side of the golden coin, that of power. If your dreams are to come true, desire must be matched by the enabling energy. Without personal power, a man's wants and needs are painfully elusive, always disappointingly out of reach. The powerless man misses the mark and consequently misses the pleasure of a luxurious life. Fortunately, no one, including you, need do without any longer. The power principles you are about to discover will see to that. The purpose of this book is to show you how to turn your many rightful desires into possessed treasures. The means by which you can achieve these miracles is through the discovery and use of your natural talents and skills and energies. More power to you. That is what you can expect to receive and actually win. What precisely do we mean by power? Taken as example, that universally admired character trait, which is called daring. What fantastic worlds open magically before the man who dares? That force alone conquered fame and fortune for men like Andrew Carnegie, Mark Twain, Albert Einstein, Hernando Cortez. As you will see in the following pages, the very same daring which won victories in their vastly different areas can guarantee your victory in your particular world. Ever feel desperate and confused as if it's just no use trying any longer? Within this book, you will find some amazing ideas about the power, yes, the power of a desperate condition. You'll be clearly shown the way to turn confusion itself into a weapon for triumph. Thousands of others have vaulted skyward with this secret force and so can you. It was the power of a compelling personality that contributed largely to the worldwide prominence of heroes like Dwight D. Eisenhower and Winston Churchill. Rest assured, that you will shortly be learning to use this force for your own prominence and enrichment. A commanding personality holds enchanting authority over people and circumstances. That is a worthwhile reason why you should start right now to build your personality power. This is but a small portion of good things to come. Power for wondrous achievement will be a revealed secret, for it shows in abundance through the man or woman who takes but a bit of time to find it. So from this page onward, toward the prize of more personal power. Some years ago, on a calm February morning, the 1600-ton ship Red Rock set sail from Townsville, Australia, 
Her bow pointed toward the volcanic isle of New Caledonia in the southwest Pacific Ocean. It was apparently to be a routine voyage across the stretch of sea for the purpose of taking on a cargo of nickel ore. Had you stood on the Australian shore to watch the red rock disappear over the horizon, you would have thought you were nothing unusual. On the following June 7th, a solemn-faced representative of the world's famous insurance firm of Lloyd's of London took the floor to make a grim announcement. The Red Rock was now more than a hundred days overdue and must therefore be posted as officially missing. This was but another way of lamentably declaring that the vessel and her crew of 24 were considered lost forever to tragedy and mystery. Lloyd's announcement was made with considerable reluctance and regret. The decision to declare any ship officially missing was made only when all hope for its safety seemed beyond reason or hope. And there was no reason to consider the Red Rock as anything but hopelessly lost. She was written off as lost on June 7th. Five days later, she turned up safely and successfully at her intended port. It was the first and only time in the entire history of Lloyd's of London that a ship officially posted as missing had ever reappeared. The Red Rock had made the fantastic voyage out of written off past history back to the present day. What had happened during the mysterious voyage? The Red Rock's hardy captain stood before a curious and admiring throng to tell a tale of conquest. From the very start, the winds and currents whipped against us, driving us far off course. That alone was enough to lose us precious weeks of time. But not a man lost heart. No adverse gale could whip those powerful men on deck. Then there were the tricky and time-taking tasks of skirting the treacherous reefs of the Coral Sea. That was a challenge, all right, but we outwitted the sea by skillfully doing what we had to do. To top it off, we sailed straight into the storms of the hurricane season. That left us with the choice of battling our way through or turning back to Australia. We chose to fight it out. My crew flinched not even once. They heroically took the storms in stride. That's how we made it, even though you gentlemen gave us up as lost. We may have been battling every moment, but we never lost heart for a bare instant. The perfect moral is, of course, don't give up the ship, regardless of what your ship, your desire may consist. There is no need for anyone to consider himself as lost, or as hopelessly adrift, or as missing out on life's very best. Not as long as he is a perfectly powerful individual. That is exactly what you are whether you know it or believe it or not. Power. Whatever you want, you have the power to attain it. The man or woman who calmly and matter-of-factly accepts the pronouncement at face value will soon find himself working magical accomplishments far beyond that which he previously dreamed possible. Dr. Gardner Murphy, one of America's foremost psychologists, declares often in contemplating the amazing range of power set free in a person who is at once liberated from false assumptions, arrogant rigidities, or bland complacency, one is amazed to see how far the untethered mind can roam. The fact is, you are ten times more powerful than you think you are. The above is not merely a catchy sentence intended solely to make you feel good. It happens to be a scientifically based truth. It should, however, make you feel good, even delightfully excited. By the time you are through with this book, I have every confidence that you will have proved for yourself that you actually are a ten times stronger person who commands himself and who builds fabulous fortunes. Perhaps you say, I feel that perhaps I could live a more powerful life if only my circumstances were a bit better or if I didn't get discouraged so easily. I'm saying to you, you now possess all the inner power you need for uplifting those poor circumstances. Also, there is absolutely nothing in the whole wide world to prevent you from leading a thrilling life of courageous conquest. Where do you need more power? To attract more friends? To experience a richer life? To solve nagging problems? To carry through a self-improvement plan? To expand your career or business? To lick failure once and for all. To free yourself from frustration. To live an exciting life. To build more all-around happiness. For every need in your life, you have a power which can satisfy it. 
Life is so constituted that every need is matched by a supply. More power. Every man instinctively knows his need of it. Feeling confused and trapped, he constantly seeks escape to his rightful freedom. That freedom can be found in fresh power. Just as new discoveries in rocket fuel may enable man to escape the pressures of gravity, so can your new power discoveries whisk you above the pressures of earthly existence. Where do we find our fresh energies? As we shall presently see in life itself, it has been with us all the time, awaiting those who dare to employ it. Life offers to every man more power to you. It is up to you to accept that offer. Life power is both good and necessary. Some folks hesitate to seize additional strength because they think it is wrong or dangerous to be a powerful individual. Somehow, they have acquired the false notion that tyranny or dictatorship or cruelty are the outcomes of a powerful personality. These characteristics are not power. They are weaknesses disguised as power. It is not the strong who are dangerous to the world and to themselves. It is the weak and the inadequate who threaten and sometimes destroy mankind's peace and prosperity. As Eric Hofer states, hatred, malice, rudeness, intolerance, and suspicion are the fruits of weakness. The resentment. The weak does not spring from any injustice done to them, but from the sense of their inadequacy and impotence. Genuine power is always good, beneficial, and necessary. That is just one reason why it is not only your right, but your duty to seize every ounce of power available. Actually, there are 10,000 reasons why you should be strong and not a single reason why you should not be. There are countless historical examples of famous persons whose personal power not only ensured their own success, but benefited mankind enormously. Baron Rothschild of the financial empire known as the House of Rothschild started off with the powers of daring enterprise and cool judgment. In time, they gave him another power, that of a financial fortune, which was to save England from bankruptcy during the Napoleonic era. Ralph Waldo Emerson's principal power was that of a rebellious spirit. The great liberator of the human mind simply wouldn't stand for the nonsense of his day, which sadly claimed man to be a slave to circumstances or to his own negativities. Sometimes a great vision is strength enough one day a young Frenchman sat in his shipment cabin aboard studying a map. He was thrilled at the possibility of cutting a canal between the Mediterranean and the Red Sea. The vision persisted until Ferdinand de Lesseps completed one of the greatest and most beneficial engineering fates of all time, the Suez Canal. You are limitless sources of fresh power. You want next to discover the source of a man's strength and to identify clearly the strengths themselves. Every power you will ever need for any purpose comes from two sources, though these two often overlap and intermingle, one from within yourself and two from exterior sources. Your inner resources are those which arise from within your own network, such as thoughts, emotions, physical strength, nervous energy, your senses of sight and hearing, also included are your powers of speech, your instinct for self-preservation, your urge for sexual fulfillment. All these and many more are wholly natural and healthy elements which we classify as inner powers. Dr. Fritz Kunkel declares, immense hidden powers seem to lurk in the unconscious depths of even the most common man. Indeed, all people without exception. It is these powers that are responsible for all great creative efforts, whether in the form of a new technical invention or a work of art. Your exterior forces are widely varied. They include everything beneficial that resides outside of yourself. Here are just a few examples. Books, schools, teachers, scientific principles, money, mechanical tools of all kinds, music, electricity, friends, vehicles of transportation, and so on. It's astonishing, a man declared to me, when you look upon these elements as powers for self-betterment, that's exactly what they are. When you realize how well supplied a man actually is, I don't see how he can fail to achieve anything he wants. No man need at all fail to achieve what he wants as long as he does realize how extraordinarily powerful he really is at the present moment. His realization is the switch that whirls his personal motors toward generating new energies in his behalf. 
Emerson makes it clear, life is a search after power. And this is an element with which the world is so saturated, there's no chink or crevice in which it is not lodged, that no honest seeker goes unrewarded. As you proceed with these pages, you'll be shown how to locate and employ expertly those particular powers which contribute the most to your specific goals. What do we exactly mean by power? For the purposes of this book, we define power as any beneficial force. This includes all those we have just discussed, plus many more to be examined later. Control of your inner forces guarantees mastery of the exterior ones. Principles of Powerful Living When I reached the age of 18, I got my first traffic ticket. The man with the badge politely informed me that whenever one comes to a stop sign, he is supposed to stop. Then six weeks of the first ticket, I got my second. I was pretty discouraged over my failure as an effective driver. You know how it is at 18, well, I was pretty much the same. I indignantly wondered why the entire police force was out to get me. My father, who by rare chance happened to be a bit older and wiser, suggested we talk it over. Those loony cops, I began thinking, it a brilliant original blame-shifting strategy. Son, I'd like to pass on to you a magnificent method for becoming a successful motorist. It's also an absolute foolproof method for outwitting the law interested. My young ears picked up. At last I had a sympathetic ally in my battle against the police persecution. I asked eagerly, what is it? It's astonishing, he said. All you have to do is one simple thing. That simple thing is to go along with the rules of the road. I blinked a bit as he went on. Supposing, for example, that you come to a sign reading stop. Now then, if you actually stop, you won't get tagged. If you don't stop, you're sure to be nailed. See? Again, supposing that a few blocks later you see a sign informing you that the speed limit is 35 miles per hour. Keep within that limit, and they can't lay a hand on you. I tell you, Vernon, this is sheer magic. Successful motoring is a matter of going along with the established rules of the road. Try it. See what happens. I thought it might be worthwhile to put this radical theory to the test. Deep down inside, I grudgingly admitted that there just might be something to it. To my astonishment and delight, it proved to be the magnificent method claimed. I gratefully completed the next full year with a perfect driving record. Success or failure along the many highways of life is not too different. Successful folks eagerly go along with power principles, while the failing ones ignore or scorn them or perhaps are unaware that they exist for their beneficial progress. The remainder of this will devote itself to preliminary principles for empowering yourself in a general you might call them swift systems for seizing immediate power. Never strain over a difficult situation or seeming barrier to your goals. Find the proper power and put it to work for you. For every distress or difficulty, there is a rescuing force. Simplify everything. Refuse to clutter yourself with unnecessary complications, especially negative emotions. Shoot directly toward your goal with a well-chosen power. Ignore the so-called entanglements, which exist principally in the mind anyway. Proceed simply, directly. While riding past a medieval castle, two young princes spied and fell in love with the princess on the tower above. One of them was so inspired by his passion that for the next ten years he climbed rugged mountains and battled fiery dragons to win finally the hand of a lady as lovely as the one on the tower. The other prince... He turned at once into the castle grounds to woo and win the inspiring lady herself. Take the direct route to your desire. Always proceed with the assumption that your selected power is double in potency to your present estimate of it. Then every time your success proves the validity of your assumption, which it always will prove, again assume that your power is double that of your present estimation. By constantly doubling your assumptions, you double your powers. One of the best forces for getting going is that of curiosity, which we will study in detail later. Go intensely inquisitive as to how much more you can achieve with your natural forces. Obstacles crumble before the man gripped by a burning curiosity. Nathaniel Hawthorne, the author of several classic American novels, wrote 164 love letters to the lady of his affections. She later turned them over to historians but not before certain words and phrases were carefully blacked out. Desperate with curiosity, scholars spent years with scientific instruments trying to read beneath the lines, which they eventually did. Their curiosity was rewarded with some sweet and spicy sentiments, 
Let your inquisitiveness return some rewards too. Never believe that power is reserved for a few fortunate ones or that it takes luck to grasp it. We have already ample illustrations, the truth that to live at all is to be powerful. That is all one needs to believe and to act upon. The thing that separates a man from his valid vigors is his time-hardened and rigid viewpoints toward power itself. He mistakenly thinks himself too young or too old, or that he was born mediocre, or that past failures are evidences of present power poverty. To the extent that you rid yourself of these mere mental contacts with powerlessness, to that extent you find yourself charged with the strengths you had all along. If there be a faith that can remove mountains, it is faith in one's own power. Don't hesitate to play around with your various energies so as to locate the ones best suited to your present purposes. One man of my acquaintance felt that his life was pretty much in a dull rut, so he determined to employ the simple power of physical action. He set himself the goal of attending 10 new clubs per month for the next three months. He carried out his plan by noting newspaper announcements of forthcoming meetings of social and recreational groups, of religious and educational societies, of business and financial organizations. Those 30 contacts proved to be an inexhaustible gold mine of new friends, of additional business leads, and best of all, of delightful times. He told me with a chuckle how interesting life becomes when you simply do your part. Every time I walked into one of those meetings, I knew I would carry out something beneficial. What a pleasant surprise to discover that just as much as I need people, they also need me. You know, the power of mere physical action has magically turned my life from a dull task into an exciting hobby. Select a single power which appeals especially to you and accomplish something more with it. Achieve anything no matter how small or insignificant it may be. Carry on with your insignificant successes and you will be surprised at their eventual significance. This kind of thoroughness results in a chain of achievements. When the explorers Lewis and Clark were exploring the West, they came across some bumbling springs which at first glance seemed an unimportant discovery. However, they followed those springs downhill to where they ran into a sizable stream. The stream led them to the Columbia River, which in turn flowed into the Pacific Ocean. Likewise, let yourself be led from one discovery to another. Remember that no man should blame himself for any lack of personal power. All of us have unwittingly fallen prey to shallow and phony doctrines that sadly proclaim helplessness as man's natural state. It is the helpless themselves who propagate these false notions. We need not scold ourselves for having innocently absorbed them along the way, but we can and should take the responsibility for squeezing them out once and for all. To repeat a previous point, it is supremely important that you recognize the powers listed in this book as powers. For example, enthusiasm is not merely a word, nor is it just a rather desirable character trait. It is a hard-hitting and practical principle upon which all worthwhile achievements are constructed. Cease to identify them as words or descriptions and mark them for what they actually are, your personal powers that establish your personal success. The chapter contains a power chart and it has 50 different powers starting with imagination, foresight, planning, accuracy, energy, initiative, persistence, relaxation, desire, hope, efficiency, self-understanding, originality, curiosity, individuality, action, decisiveness, leadership, daring, responsibility, faith, receptivity, enthusiasm, concentration, simplicity, investigation, thoroughness, alertness, courage, self-command, sense of humor, patience, attention, self-interest, experimentation, ambition, cooperation, cheerfulness, consistency, poise, intuition, fact-finding, flexibility, friendliness, determination, love, anticipation, tact, peacefulness, and observation. It is no mere theory that you are right now ten times more powerful than you think you are. It is a provable principle, but you will test for yourself as you believe it. The average man's problem is not the creation of more power, but the understanding and employment of that which he already possesses. Science, psychology, philosophy, religion all agree with this. 
For every problem or confusion, and for every desire or ambition, there is an available force waiting for your call. Force, force, everywhere force. We ourselves, a mysterious force in the center of that, Carlisle. Additional strength is not only your right, but your duty toward the best interests of yourself and your family. The rules for dynamic living are easily understood. When you go along with them, all roads lead to power. Assume that your open-minded reading of chapter one has launched you forward with zest to the degree of your receptivity. You have already launched yourself. Proceed with principles in these pages with an open mind, with an attitude of daring experimentation. Man is man and master of his fate, Tennyson. When you need a fresh change of encouragement or stimulation, review your forces, your magic power of decision. The famous German philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche once fell in love with a lovely local lady, but because his philosophies didn't cover the art of a decisive proposal of marriage, he sent a friend of his to bend a knee for him. The lovely lady promptly rejected Nietzsche's offer and married his friend instead. That's an instance of how personal indecision can blow up a man's desires. One day, an American astronomer named Clyde Tombaugh was handed some curious astronomical reckonings which had been drawn up by the noted Percival Lowell of the Lowell Observatory. Tombaugh believed that the charts just might be a clue to an immense astronomical discovery. He decided to use them for probing the heavens for something new. He found something it turned out to be the ninth planet, Pluto. That's one way in which the personal decision can open new worlds. There's excellent reasons why we have listed decisiveness as one of your first major powers. Decision is the crown that endows your life with kingly supremacy and authority. The masterful monarch is the one who chooses to command absolutely his own power of choice. The strongest principle of growth lies in human choice, George Eliot. A moment's reflection proves that your intention always precedes every action in every area of life. There is no action without there first being a choice on either the conscious or the subconscious level. Some of your choices may be more or less trivial, while others are vital to your health or to your finances or to your happiness. Everything you have ever done and everything you will ever do happens the way it does because of the way you make up your mind. Not only that, but once you have settled on a certain course, it becomes necessary for you to base further decisions upon the original choice. Take, for instance, the man who makes up his mind to sharpen his occupational accuracy. From that definite decision, he can confidently proceed to other progressive choices, such as the best way to go about it and where to find assistance. On the other hand, the man who fails to choose accuracy improvement, which is a negative decision, forces himself into further negative choices such as turning down opportunities that call for accuracy. All of us can learn not only to be decisive in the first place, but to be select and to select those better courses that in turn lead to other better courses beyond every wise choice or the vast areas of opportunity. The happy fact is anyone can master the art of prompt and precise decisions the kind that crash through hesitation and spill on to victory wherever you want it. We become men of choice by freeing ourselves from hidden subconscious inhibitions. Indecision is nothing more than a tug of war between a conscious desire to do something and a subconscious fear of acting out that desire. $50,000 worth of information. When you meet a man who turns everything he touches into gold, you're likely to figure that he has some special means for doing it. You might attribute it to a genius like mind or to inside tips or maybe to a favorable nod from the goddess of fate. Mr. Arnold F. has none of these, yet he has his finger in a dozen financial pies including Arizona real estate and Hawaiian tourist trade. How did he get stuck so nicely? That's what lots of less prosperous folks would like to know. That's why he is in eager demand all over the nation as a public speaker. People who want to get places like to hear him talk, especially when he talks frankly like this. Ladies and gentlemen, the information you are about to receive tonight is worth $25,000 to you. No, I'll take that back. It's worth at least $50,000 if you will take it. That's the minimum value of the principles we're going to take up. We're going to find out how to decide our way forward all the way forward. 
pardon me for saying so, but some of you have splitting headaches right now from trying to decide between Roquefort and French dressing on your dinner salad, yet you call yourselves men of decision. Some of you are deciding yourself right out of everything you want. The plain fact is you don't have the nerve to step right up and take what you want. You have the inner conviction that you maybe could achieve 10 times as much, but you won't make up your mind to once and for all go ahead. You rationalize by saying you'll wait until conditions are brighter, or you think you'd better think it over a while longer, or you don't think it's been done before, or you say you'd better check with someone, or you're not sure you can follow through, or you just don't know. Some of you folks out there have more alibis than a kid caught in a cookie jar. Maybe you're asking, but isn't it intelligent to wait until I know exactly how things are going to turn out? The answer is if you have to know exactly where you are going, you will never go anywhere. That's the big problem. You want so desperately to be secure and to be protected that you're scared to step off into the adventure of the unknown. Go ahead if you want to be what you call secure, but don't ever expect to advance beyond the petty positions you now occupy. I'm not being insulting. You know I'm telling you the truth. Personally, I'd rather enjoy the idea of not knowing exactly where I'm going. That gives me the opportunity for investigation, which can lead to improvement. Ladies and gentlemen, if you insist upon safety at every step, you might as well close your doors and turn in your business licenses. You have no business owning one anyway. Indecision is the mark of a fearful mind. You are afraid your choice will be criticized. You worry they won't like you anymore. You wonder how you'll ever apologize for your mistake. You pretend the problem doesn't really exist. You timidly wish someone else would shoulder it. You think that civilization depends upon your choice. You are afraid of what will happen if you do decide and scared to death as to what will happen if you don't. If glup was a word in the English language meaning yes and no, some of you would be the world's greatest gluppers. I'm not criticizing anyone. We are digging together to get at the bottom of a serious matter. I promised you $50,000 worth of information. Here's another $10,000 worth. Don't think so hard. Act. Don't ask so many fool questions. Decide. Don't wonder what will happen. Let it. Don't try to figure it out. Let it work itself out. Some of you will walk out of here thinking that was certainly a lively talk. Wish I knew his secrets. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you his secrets. You're on the inside at this very moment. Don't just listen. Absorb. Why not decide right now to revolt against your greatest enemy, indecision? Decide right now that you're tired of getting cheated by maybe. Make up your mind to rebel against the unfairness of later, on. Determine that you've been bamboozled for the last time by I'll think it's over. Anyone in this room can swiftly increase his income by 50% or more if he will really decide to do so. Your wholehearted decision is enough in itself to promote the ways and means. If you don't believe me, try it. You'll be a confirmed believer. To repeat, ladies and gentlemen, if you are not making progress, you can charge it to a fickle mind. Oh, yes, you may want to. You may hope to. You may even agree to. But let me tell you for sure that if you are not progressing, your want is weak and your hope is half-hearted and your agreement is is inconstant. There's no sense kidding ourselves. If we're not rocketing skyward, it's because we haven't really touched off the fuse of decision. I urge you to decide to decide. Decision is power. What decisiveness will do for you? Let's look at a few of the rewards you can expect from a made-up mind. First of all, the man who settles things one way or another is able instantly to turn his full attention and energy toward his next progressive step. Being free from something, he is free toward something new. Indecision is like a merry-go-round in that you spin without getting anywhere. Decisiveness is like a sightseeing bus in that you are free to travel beyond the previously known places to exciting worlds never explored before. Here's how Dr. Rollo May expresses it Freedom is cumulative. One choice made with an element of freedom makes greater freedom possible for the next choice. Each exercise of freedom enlarges the circumference of the circle of oneself. There is nothing like a stout 
resolution for releasing you from painful confusion. Indecision itself is confusion. The mind that settles for one course or another usually relieves itself to a major degree, often dissolves its confusion completely. You are already aware, of course, that prompt choices save you time and energy. People who complain of lack of these elements are usually those who waste them by swinging endlessly between their alternative choices. All-around efficiency will be yours once you know what you want and shoot straight for it. Harry Houdini, for one, determined to become the greatest magician in the world. Once he thoughtfully worked out the mere details of that determination, the world agreed that he was the greatest all right. The decisive personality wins self-esteem plus admiration from others. There is nothing more to be esteemed than a manly firmness and decision of character. I like a person who knows his own mind and sticks to it, who sees it at once, who is to be done in given circumstances and does it. An unsettled mind is a jumbled mass of contradictions. The more it tries to figure things out, the deeper it sinks into despair. If you ever find yourself trapped by your own efforts to reason through a problem, it makes sense to stop thinking so hard. The more you struggle against confusion, the more it wraps itself around you. It is a fact that some people think too much for their own good. A salesman called recently to talk over a problem connected with his career. His goal was well enough defined. He was earning in excess of $150 per week, but wished to boost it at least to $200 plus. He remarked that he had carefully studied and applied all the proven techniques for creating customer interest and for rounding up fresh prospects, yet in spite of all efforts, he just wasn't clicking. Something was lacking, he confessed, but he didn't know what. During the discussion, I discovered he had been purposely skipping some of the top prospects in town. That is, the largest firms with the bigger buying budgets. I asked him why he was passing them by. He said he wasn't sure, but maybe because some sort of mental block. The fact is, Roy, you haven't been able to definitely decide to contact them. Is that it? I suppose, but I can't seem to inspire myself with those big positive thoughts one is supposed to have. You know what they say, it takes giant confidence to take a giant step, but I just can't force any confident thoughts no matter how hard I try. Then why waste time trying if you can't? You can't. That's all there is to it. But you can make a quiet, unemotional decision to show them your merchandise. Crashing through to new accounts is a matter of doing, not thinking. Well, yes, when you put it that way, why don't you put it that way just for the fun of it? We worked out a plan for making and maintaining decisions. Roy was to take a sheet of paper and write down the names of the larger companies and accounts he wished to land. Opposite them, he was to list the only pair of choices he could possibly make to call or not to call. Finally, he was to check off the affirmative decisions as final. Once made, there was no possibility for changing them. As I examined his chart, I asked, now that it's done, what else is there to think about? He grinned. Nothing, it's all settled, cleared away. There is the next step though, and what's that? Preparing myself so as to make those calls effective. But that's no problem. All you have to do is get going. He got. He got on the spot orders from two of the firms with two more as definite possibilities. That salesman had his own tangible evidence that when thinking causes confusion, it's high time to stop thinking and start deciding. Non-thinking, when followed up by bold action, can break down all timid or baffled states of mind. President Andrew Jackson declared, take time to deliberate, but when the time for action arrives, stop thinking and go in. Your Definition of Decisiveness It is told that the ancient military genius Hannibal of Carthage had a unique method for selecting a self-sufficient soldier for performing a vital task. Hannibal would instruct his aide to send several men into his tent one by one to receive orders. On one occasion, as each stood at attention, Hannibal bluntly commanded, Go find out the number of opposing Romans. The first soldier asked, What's the best route? The second explained, Sir, that's not my usual duty. The third wondered, what map should I use? The fourth inquired, how much time do I have? The fifth snapped, yes, sir, and spinning on his heel, he marched out. Hannibal didn't have to select the best man. The best man selected himself. 
This is more than a historical incident. It is a message of tremendous significance for anyone who wants to build his decision power, yet who feels the whole thing is too complex. Please notice that the soldier's choice was in itself quite simple, uncomplicated, easy to make. It did not call for super intelligence. It did not require sure skill. It didn't even take what is commonly referred to as courage. All that was required of that soldier was an easygoing willingness to see what there was in the challenge. Let's look at it this way. A decision is a calm, definite turn of the mind toward a certain direction. There need be no effort or brainy brilliance involved because decision of itself is not at all concerned with how you are to carry through. You are only agreeing fully that you will proceed along the chosen course. Once you really make this agreement, you will find that the how appears all by itself. Because in case you didn't know it, you are far more resourceful in your depths than you think. Whenever you decide that you are hungry for lunch, you never have any trouble reasoning out the means for satisfying yourself. Make a firm resolve to satisfy your hungers and you will shortly be joined by the necessary powers. Some folks make the mistake of confusing cause with effect. Your decision is the cause that releases the effect that is your resources. Know how and courage appear as a result of a made up mind. Waiting for courage to make up your mind is a lifetime wait. If it took courage to build decisiveness, many of us would be sunk. Fortunately, the reverse is true. Decision builds courage. Remember that a good intention clothes itself with sudden power. Emerson. Herbert D., a retail merchant, set himself the worthy goal of building a new home by Christmas, but sometimes worried lest he unwillingly break his word to himself and his family. I asked him exactly what is worrying you. For one thing, the financing, I'm not quite sure I can swing it over the top. Let's revolutionize our thinking toward the problem. Tell me, Herb, what on earth has the financing got to do with your original resolve to have that home? In reality, nothing whatever. Yet you are letting it interfere seriously with that decision. Your basic problem isn't doubtful finances. It's a wobbly mind. I tell you, Herb, if you will flatly refuse to permit anything to shake you from your original decision, you will have that money and the house, and you yourself will be the one who makes sure of it. You'll get the money. You'll find the way. Looking at it like that makes sense. What else bothers you? Well, you know all the nagging details, where to locate the home, the final blueprints, all that. I hope I don't get messed up somewhere. Again, let me say, what have those details got to do with your irrevocable resolution to build your new home? All those details that bother you are secondary conditions that you wrongly have placed first. That's what weakens the drive you need for moving in. Your decision to have that home is first. If you will doggedly keep it first, you'll be amazed at your ready-to-hand strength for punching through those so-called nagging details. You are saying that I shouldn't let the mental after-effects of my choice interfere with the choice itself. Right. If you were to polish your car, you wouldn't let sticky spots hinder your determination to make it shine. Your resolve itself takes care of them. Herb got his home all right. He informed me later on how he had decided himself and his family right through the front door. One time both my wife and I got panicky at a sudden downturn in my income. It looked like another couple of years in the old shack. My wife sighed that maybe we should wake up from our dream. I told her, we can't, it's too late. When she asked what I meant, I told her that I'd made the promise to us and there isn't a single thing I can do about it. It's too late to give up. I'm stuck with my decision. The only thing I can do is back it up by raising the money. That revolutionary thinking drove me to hound tactfully every one of my customers to buy just a bit more than usual. To my surprise, most of them did just that. That's how my home was built. Please make up your mind to come on over next Saturday for a barbecue. Three powerful decisions to make right now. One, decide that you are more powerful than you think. There need be the slightest strain or effort on your part to decide that you possess inner capabilities far beyond those presently experienced. It requires neither powerful faith nor hope, only a quiet acceptance. We don't have to exercise faith or hope toward an established fact. We need merely to act in harmony with it. This kind of healthy attitude is similar to a treasure diver who constantly comes to the surface 
hidden with the treasures hidden in the sea. No matter how ineffectual an individual may feel himself to be, the opposite fact of his powerlessness remains intact. A man begins to stretch his inner muscles as soon as he realizes that his timid viewpoints toward himself must be discounted in favor of the fundamental truth underlying his makeup as a man. Dr. Eric Fromm says, Productiveness is man's ability to use his powers and to realize the potentialities inherent in him. He can make use of his powers only if he knows what they are, how to use them, and what to use them for. Quietly agree that you are stronger than you may think. Now the seed has been well planted, permit it to grow by itself, and it will certainly do so. The best part of all is that you set everything into motion by your simple selection. One man relates how he solved the crisis of selecting between his two selves. I told myself I had but two choices, to be as strong as I actually am or as weak as I feel I am. I had no trouble at all in making the right choice. Two, decide firmly to no longer waste your energies. As we all know by experience, mankind is capable of expressing both constructive and destructive power. To the extent that he employs one, he prevents the use of the other. Take the familiar destructive power of worry, perhaps the most wasteful of all forces. The worried mind is incapable of anything constructive. It always breeds after its own kind, hence gives birth to misguided actions, unsatisfactory circumstances, anxious moments, and often resentments and hostilities. Worry wastes with reckless abandon the strengths we need for fortune hunting. No one will disagree with these remarks, yet some may comment, I'm certainly in favor of the conquest of worry. That's what I've been wanting for a long time, but how can I maintain my decision not to fret when there seem to be so many contrary forces working against me? That is a fair question and fortunately no problems at all. The answer is found in your next mater's decision. Three. Decide to practice constructive self-interest. It is of the utmost importance that you ally yourself with constructive self-interest. It is the only power that counterattacks and puts to rout not only worry but every other force that damages your happiness and prosperity. Very few understand this restorative force, those who do become leaders among men. What is meant by constructive self-interest? Defined in its simplest terms, it means that you wholeheartedly and unashamedly place your own best interests first. Perhaps you say, but don't we more or less put ourselves first anyway? In chapter 1, you yourself pointed out that self-serving power is natural and right. Please follow carefully. Often, when we think we are serving our best interests, we are in fact doing just the opposite. Genuine self-serving always leads to power and happiness. Mistaken self-serving results in confused and empty lives. Take again our example of worry. When you fret constantly over something, you are really placing yourself first? Of course not. You are needlessly sacrificing yourself to a negative emotion. People worry because they know no other way to handle a problem. If they were to practice constructive self-interest by determinedly placing their peace of mind before the problem, they would witness an amazing solution to the problem itself. As another example, take the man whose mind is oppressed by remembrances of past failures. Why, you may ask, would he permit himself to be cruelly dominated by experiences so long gone and removed from his present self? He may submit to them because he thinks it best if he scold himself and hence remove a bit of the guilt feeling. The truth is he is serving his own self-destruction, not his self-interest. By an act of constructive self-interest, he could declare himself utterly free from the past that valorous act would empower his present in a way he never dreamed possible. Is it selfish to practice self-interest? It is not. It is exactly the opposite. The more you learn to satisfy yourself, the more you automatically contribute to the world around you. Obviously, a mind without worry is the kind that can best help a world that needs so much help. This power will be examined in greater detail. But for now, decide to employ it it's an amazingly unselfish decision. Decisive ideas to remember. 1. The man who learns to make up his mind becomes a power over people and circumstances. 2. Your prosperous growth can begin with little more than a definitive choice of that prosperity and growth. 
An unwavering intention alone is enough to add all other necessary powers. 3. Don't decide against yourself by choosing to put things off or to wait for a better opportunity. 4. Remember that decision itself is the ready fuse that touches off your skyrocketing flight to new worlds of conquest. 5. If you have to wait until you know exactly where you're going, you will never go anywhere. Columbus did not know where he was headed, but he made some great discoveries. 6. Whenever you are completely lost for a decision, why not decide to go forward? 7. Simplify your intentions by refusing to get involved with all the complexities of how you will carry out your plan. Set your decision in the lead and your own intelligence will follow up with the details. 8. Any time you feel powerless or confused, leap back at once to your original resolve. Simply by holding on to it, you effortlessly empower yourself afresh. And finally, from this day forward, practice constructive self-interest. Select techniques from this chapter and which offer the most to your particular plan and use them decisively. So there's two really important points that you should get from these chapters. And we'll definitely come back to this because Vernon Howard has such an inspiring way to get you to focus on yourself and to understand how simple it is to overcome your challenges and problems. And that is number one, you have a right to amazing powers that are already within you. And so many people hold back their powers because they think it's wrong. They don't understand it. They think power is bad, just very much like prosperity. They avoid prosperity because they think prosperity is bad. There are a number of powers that are specific to you that are unique and powerful. Perhaps it's your persistence or your planning or your daring or your responsibility. Perhaps it's your enthusiasm or your ability to concentrate your in ability to investigate or thoroughness, all those things are unique to you that you can bring to any situation and you completely transform it. You have amazing powers and you have a right to these powers. And really the big thing that to come away from this is you're already powerful. And a lot of times you don't realize it and you've limited your powers. One of the most amazing powers that you can have, secondly, is your power of decision. As we've discussed in past episodes on decisions and the power of decisions, how to make a decision is decisiveness can be one of the most effective powers that you have. Start becoming more decisive and you'll become more linked to your own intuition and you'll be able to get things done faster and more efficiently. Decisiveness is more important than correct decision. And as you do this and embrace this idea, you can really come into a great path of reality creation as I have found. There's so much more to this book and we will return to it, but he goes over a variety of different things, power planning and the power of self-command in addition to a variety of different discussions of power and your own magical power within. I hope you enjoy Vernon Howard. Definitely return to Vernon Howard. There's so many different authors that we want to explore on the podcast that can help us to understand our place in this world. And I hope it's helping you. I'm imagining love and joy for everyone listening. You can find all episodes of The Reality Revolution at therealityrevolution.com. Check out the Aura program, which is still available, the Alternate Universe Reality Activation, which includes a couple of new meditations that are not available on the channel as well as a variety of Zoom discussions that we had on Neville Goddard and the Law of One. It's pretty amazing and it's still available. We have RealityCon 2 coming up soon, so I hope you can check those out. In any case, I love you all so much and welcome to the Reality Revolution.